Mm -hmm. EBA greats such as Earl Anthony, Bo Burton, Ernie Schlegel, and Mike Galby are just some of the names that made their place in ABC Masters history. The Masters took its current format back in 1980, with Neil Burton beating Mark Ross for the title. And through the years, many have tried to capture this major crown. This year's field included 14 past Masters champions. All are trying to steal the title. Away from last year's amateur winner, Brett Wolf. Anything can happen today. We'll find out what will next. From the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada, ESPN's live coverage of the PBA Tour continues with a second major of the year, the ABC Masters. Now let's meet our four finalists in the stepladder format today. From Claremont, Florida, his 20 career wins include three majors. Two weeks ago, he became the 15th man of all 300 on TV, Norm Dude. He has three majors among his 35 career titles and is a PBA Hall of Famer. Ranked first in the PBA World Rankings from Ocala, Florida, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. From Bashan Island, Washington, he was a member of the 1998 Wichita State National Championship team. The 2001 Amateur Bowler of the Year and Lone Amateur in today's final, Jason Williams. And appearing in his seventh career TV show, he looks for his first win today. The number one seed in the 2003 ABC Masters from Roseburg, Oregon, Brian Smith. Those are the four finalists for the 2003 ABC Masters. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Reno, Nevada. So glad you could join us today, Dave Ryan. And Randy Peterson, thoughts from Leslie Goodell, our reporter, in a moment. It's the second major of the year, Randy. $100,000 on the line and double tour points. But big storylines, too, with a brand new format these guys are facing, plus a new environment. Well, yeah, new environment, the, arena, the uh, bowling stadium here in Reno, but the format, that's the ticket. 537 players started this event. They bowled 15 games of qualifying. They reduced the field down to the top 64, including defending champion Brett Smith. They then went for, uh, to a double elimination format. Three games total pins decided the winner. That brought us to our four guys today. But we're not using the bracket system. We're using the old stepladder format. Norm Duke, the number four seed, will take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the first match. The winner will then advance to take on the amateur, Jason Williams. And the winner of that match will, bro, will bowl, excuse me, Brian Smith for the ABC Masters title. Ready, only one of our four finalists, Norm Duke in 93, has won a Masters title. He and Walter A. Williams Jr. trying to return to major glory today. Brian Smith has never won a championship before, and Jason Williams is an amateur trying to become the second straight amateur to win this event in two straight years. So, the big question is, which storyline is most important in addition to the oil pattern? Yeah, the lanes this week, ABC sport condition, very tough, very short pattern. 34 feet, the shortest we've seen all year. The shortest pattern on the tour is 37 feet. What that means is big back ends. The players could not play the middle part of the lane and throw that big banana hook. What they had to do was they had to move right and play a much straighter, much more direct line. You'll see Norm Duke, you'll see Brian Smith take their hand out of it and pipe it from out. You had to control, change the direction down the lane. Right, since the current Masters format started in 1980, no one has come from the third or fourth slot as Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Norm Duke are now to win this event. They try to make some history this afternoon. Norm Duke goes for his 21st career title after bowing so well in Tacoma. And Walter Ray Williams Jr., another major on the line for him today. Bob Burns, Pro Bowler, average 213. He shoe the Dexter SST6. Frank Rogers, league bowler, average 180. His shoe, Dexter Turbo. Clint Fisher, casual bowler, average 145. His shoe, the Dexter Rocky II. Jan Martell, family bowler, her average 160. Her shoe, the Dexter Tiffany. Marcy Randall, cosmic bowler, average, <laughs> who's counting? Her shoe, Dexter Starlight. Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world. The right shoe for you. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the ABC Masters is presented to you by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world. What's your size? By Miller High Life to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. 
and by the American Bowling Congress providing championship service since 1895. Make sure your league is ABC sanctioned. It's the 53rd annual ABC Masters, third straight year it's been held. The National Bowling Stadium, a fantastic facility. Let's find out how Walter Ray and Norm got here today to the finals. Walter Ray Williams Jr. was the tournament leader this week, needing a key victory in the winner's bracket Saturday to make the TV show. That win came over Brian Bogosian. Norm Duke came out of the loser's bracket by defeating Sean Rash, 706 to 589, in three games of match play with a total pinfall. Duke competed all day long. About 12 hours he was on the lanes, beating out Tim Mack by 20 pins to advance to today's TV show, bidding for a second career Masters title. And I'm with Norm Duke, who last time he faced Walter Ray Williams Jr. bowled a 300 at Tacoma. Norm, while many people get intimidated by him when they get to the show, you rise to the level of competition. What is it going to take to beat him today? It might take another 300, because he, he, he doesn't forget very easy. That's too bad, too, because I was hoping I'd just kind of come in under the radar, but no. So beating him is uh, going to be quite the challenge anyway. Yeah, it's all, always a challenge. Too. Well, it's an ideal matchup on paper. Thank you very much, Norm. The first and third, Walter Ray is first on the average leaders list, and Norm is third. So ideal matchup on paper, Dave Ryan. That it is, Leslie. Thank you. Norm telling us this morning, Randy, he's just playing exhausted because he had to bowl so many games, as we saw in the How They Got Here segment a moment ago. And one on the line, 100,000 to the winner and 50 for the runner-up Big Bucks. Excuse me. And one of the unique things about the format, all right, buddy, come on. Norm Duke bowled all day yesterday, 10 matches in all. He had to go down in the loser's bracket. Brian Smith, however, our tournament leader, bowled six matches. Legends head-to-head. -head. What a start to the Masters today from Reno. In the pocket, Norm Duke, you heard a moment ago, whispering to himself. And we have our players mic'd here in Reno, as we do every week on the PBA Tour. Walter Ray doesn't interact with himself or others as much. He is pretty stoic out there, very focused. They call him Deadeye for a reason. Incredibly consistent. And he is the tour leader in all major categories. Everyone shooting for this man, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Good start to his major today. Well, some people call him dead eye. I call him cash cow. Because this guy is just going to the ATM, it seems like, week in and week out. Walter Ray Williams Jr. had the highest average of our four guys today. Strike percentage, obviously, higher than Norm Dukes. That's why he's averaging five pins a game better. Last night, last night Norm, or uh, excuse me, Walter Ray almost shot 300 against Brian Bogosian. There's a little bit of self-interaction. Hasn't needed much of that, Randy, with an incredibly consistent year, now in his seventh TV show of this season. This is the swish zone, the light hit. This is why you have power on the bowling ball. You think Walter Ray maybe is thinking about that 300 north shot at him a couple weeks ago? Who wouldn't? As Norm said, it might take another 300 game to make the next round. Oh. Step ladder, a little slip there on the approach. You heard him react, but it didn't matter much in the pocket. Big giant stick. And you know what? You just have to, you've got to say something about how great a swing Norm Duke has. He can get away with a shot like this because of how great that swing is. <laughs> he completely cuts the follow through off, but because the swing is so good, he guides the ball in the right direction. And that was the key this week. You had to direct the ball online. See the career numbers and the only Masters titleist in our final four today. That's quite a winning percentage. Won it in Oklahoma in 93. Crosses over a bit. Dang it. And Norm reacts. Yeah, and early on, Norm, he's having a little bit of trouble with the approach. And one of, the, one of the keys to making good shots and repeating shots is you have to plant or hit, stick that landing. Start sticking and slipping, it's going to be pretty tough to get it off your hand the same way twice. Looking for his mark. Picks up the spare. And a solid start for each. Randy, do you think at this level, all the accomplishments, 55 combined tournaments, that the nerves are still going for these two? 
Well, I think early on it's more adrenaline than anything else. These guys have been there so so often, so many times. Maybe a little bit of nerves, but much more adrenaline. Ooh. Speaking of adrenaline, that was a massive messenger going right at the seven. Everything goes right by. Watch the head pin. Four pin just gets chopped right by the seven. Page is kind of wishing for a, a strike rather than a, a nine tap, we call it. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is perfect through three frames in terms of hitting the pocket, but the score is all tied. Seven pin for his mark. His wife, Paige Pennington, with him on every tour stop. There's live coverage of the PBA second major of the year. The ABC Masters from Reno. Very unique format and environment. Stadium bowling for the players here. Not the Cal yeah, Walter wants there at all. See, and to me, that's what happens. Really good direction. A pinch too fast. The ball doesn't grab the lane. Leaves the bucket. The 2-4-8-10. Or excuse me, the 2 4 8 -10. The 2 4 5 8 Five and one this week, match play with a 227 average. But that's only part of what's happened for these bowlers to get to the final four. And our TV show covers the spare. Thank you. For the four pin count. It has been difficult to say the least, as you mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, Randy, with all of the bowling they had to do. And if you're coming out of the loser's bracket, it's a big challenge. Yeah, you know, not not so much. I mean, all the bowling, yeah, you know, that that you take that into consideration, but also the mental fatigue of being on the lanes for 12 hours grinding on a really tough condition. Just one player coming out of the winner's bracket, that's Brian Smith. The other three on our show today from the loser's bracket, including Norm Duke, he's in the pocket. 60 feet to success for Norm. A march to the PBA World Championship. In March, Taylor, Michigan, outside Detroit. Walter Ray Williams Jr., second right now in points, but that did not include what he'll earn today, which at the very least will be 34,000 points. If he wins it, 50,000 points, double tour points on the line for our second major of the season. Yeah, if Walter would win today, he could pretty much take the rest of the year off and still make it into the top eight. And that's big because you go right to match play at the World Championship. <clears throat> You know, the thing that really, really amazes me about Norm Duke is that he relishes the fact of going up against the greatest player in the world. I know a lot of guys out on tour, if they had to bowl somebody, it certainly wouldn't want them, that person to be Walter A. Williams Jr., me being one of those people. Norm, he welcomes it. Come on, man, come on. In a group, Walter A. Williams Jr. now feeling better. You saw the overhead perspective of you know, the bowlers, we have different camera angles here at the stadium in Reno, and as usual, Norm Duke works on that ball. Yeah, you know, the sport of bowling is such a feel sport. You know, other sports, golf, you, you've got to feel the club. In football, you feel that that spiral, the, the, uh, the ball coming off your fingertips. The same in bowling, it's all feel. And Norm is very, very meticulous and particular with that feel. Yeah. Seventh TV appearance. He's got to win. He leads in tour points, or at least he will at the end of this weekend. And in money one, it's Walter Ray Williams Jr. But not far behind him this year has been the consistent play of Norm Duke. It's a dream matchup. Two legends head to head to start us off. In the 1993 ABC Masters, Norm Duke qualified as the tournament leader and would defeat then amateur Patrick Allen in the title match. It would be Norm's first major and would ultimately springboard him toward the Player of the Year title. It also helped him get inducted into the ABC Hall of Fame last year. Norm said what he remembers most about winning that tournament was the night before the show, he and his wife drove home to Oklahoma City. When they got there, the house was flooded. By the time they got back, to Tulsa, they had had about two hours of sleep before the show, and he says that that tournament got him back into the tournament champions, and that's all he was focused on. Leslie, wife Karen, and son Brandon are watching closely today from Florida. Great memories for Norm all those years ago. Good-looking shot there, but ends up just with one pin left. And you mentioned watching that recap from his 
early days, similar ball pattern. Yeah, similar uh, way he's playing the lanes. Even though that wasn't in Reno when he won, it was in Oklahoma City. Same type of shot for Norm. That outside shot. Picks up a four pin. Norm tells us it's a very easy format as long as you just keep on winning. But if you're in the loser's bracket, as you can see, his second match he lost to Mac becomes a lot more difficult. The pressure is on all the time. Just a total grind for him to get into the TV show as one of the final four players. Even for someone with this much experience, that says a lot. <sighs> Big challenge. Pocket. And he says his hand, bowling hand, is so sore he can't believe it. He had to give it a lot of treatment last night after he bowled all day. His ring finger on the right hand is huge. He couldn't even get his wedding ring on it to show me this morning. Well, he's giving it the little grunt, the little Monica Sellis grunt right at release. I don't know how much of that is him trying to throw it hard or just the fact that his hand is killing him. Looking for a triple, Walter Ray in a seven pin lead. How Get some help. Hello, trip two. Just a pinch to the right. Remember, there's not a lot of help on the lane, but what a great break that is. A little trip two pin for Walter Ray. Seven pin lead, it can increase to 17, eighth frame, working on three in a row. A man with 35 career titles, three majors. That's better. That's better. Come on, man. Looking good. And again, talking about feel. Players can feel it when it leaves their hand. They know that it's a good shot. It's just a matter of all 10 pins going down, and that was 10 in the pit. Come on, go ball. Come on. Norm Duke can strike out for 258. Walter Ray Williams Jr. can strike out for 265. Big fans cheering him on. Another big shot. Now this is what we term high flush. The low backswing, the flat hand, the great release at the target. And watch this ball, almost went right by the nine pin. These two guys, in my opinion, Dave Ryan, have the best touch on the PBA Tour. They can do anything they want to with a bowling ball. They can manipulate it any way they want. And in my opinion, two of the best shot makers we have. Max score 258 for Norm. Watching on ESPN in sync for a three-pin lead with a strike. Whoa! Right there. Another one. And you know why Norm Duke's excited about that shot? That's the foundation frame, the ninth frame. That's what's going to enable him to strike out in the 10th to force Walter Ray Williams Jr. to strike in the 9th, 10th, and 11th to beat him. Look out. Needs it. Come on. He's got it going on on that lane. He's got the trip two going. He's got the wall shot going. And right now, he's two strikes and count away from winning the first match. Don't forget PBA Store in Las Vegas Classic next Sunday and note the start time. And it is unique, 4.30 Eastern time, 1.30 here on the West Coast. We're coming to you from downstate, about six and a half, seven hour drive or so from where we are in Reno. Through the desert, down to Vegas. Or a 45 minute flight. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> in the pocket, another big strike for Walter Ray Williams Jr. One strike, four pins. Walter Ray advances to take on the amateur, Jason Williams. But what a great shot this is. Want to know why this guy has 35 career titles? Right there. Last night against Brian Bogosian, Walter Ray starts off slow. He's down trailing in the match by about 27 pins. The next game starts with the front 10, shoots 289. Tough as nails, and that's what Norm told us this morning. No one is tougher than that. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Four pins. You don't think this guy can get four pins? Well, he can get four pins left-handed. A seven-bagger for Walter Ray Williams Jr. Cruising now into the next round. Step ladder format. Take on the amateur. Jason Williams from near Seattle. 
looking for, obviously, first ever PBA title. Walter Reyes won 35 times, looking to extend it and get closer to Earl Anthony's record. There's a 10 pin and there's a win over Norm Duke. And the key in this match, simple, the breaks that Walter Ray got on the right lane is what enabled him to throw two, four, six, seven in a row. Oh. If he doesn't drop the two pin. Yeah, well, that's okay, Walter. We're all entitled. You've certainly bowled well enough and not got the breaks at times. Uh, Pitch very out. effective. Pitch out. And very challenging week will end here for Norm Duke, who said this morning to us just about, about an hour and a half ago, he's exhausted. Yeah. Plain and simple, it is a tough grind for these players. Turn it around. We're on the air at 9.30 Pacific time. Got to be here pretty early in the morning, he bowled. So about 10 o'clock last night, local time. And Walter Ray Williams, Jr., the man they call Deadeye, focused for another championship. Yeah, you know, this turned out to be the match we all thought it would be. I guarantee if Walter would have gave Norm an opening, Norm would not have thrown that shot. He just threw the death break. It would look more like that one. So we are guaranteed to have a new Masters champion. The only prior winner was Norm Duke. Walter Ray Williams, Jr., his best finishes here, ninth in 1988 and 91. A 29-22 career record. Make it 30 and 22 after a victory over Norm Duke. He's off to play the amateur Jason Williams next. This format for the ABC Masters starting in 1980. Only the number one and two spot have ever won. Walter Ray Williams Jr. coming from the third and fourth slot along with Norm Duke has advanced off to the next round where he'll take on the amateur Jason Williams. Let's look at our days in on the road. Las Vegas Classic next week from Vegas, 4.30 Eastern time start. Keep that in mind here on ESPN. U.S. Open, the third of the fourth majors. A couple weeks down the road near L.A. And then it's all leading to the PBA World Championship. Taylor Sportsplex near Detroit. Regional to talk about in Rockledge, Florida. One of the great bowlers on tour this year has been Chris Barnes. Joined now by our Leslie Goodell. Well, Brian Smith is the number one seed in this tournament. And any given weekend, you can find him out at a tournament watching his roommate, Chris Barnes, who is there so often. But it, you know, the tables have turned. Obviously, you would like to be out there this weekend, but you're out there supporting him. How, how important is that support, and what have you been able to tell him today? Well, you know, really, he's earned a lot of this on his own. He's worked really hard, and it's been a really tough season for him. Uh, as we've roomed together over the years, I've had a lot more success, and, and it had to be really hard for him because he's been out here a lot longer, and he's helped me a ton. Uh, maybe I help him a little bit today, but I think he's earned most of this on his own. The money, obviously, a gigantic purse today, $100,000 first prize, but at the same time, that title, he hasn't won a title before. How do you separate the two? Can you not focus on one and focus on the other? Well, really, hopefully he's focusing on just knocking the pins over, because that's probably the only way he's going to beat Norman Walter today. And, and besides, he doesn't know it yet, but we got a split working for this week. Well, he's made match play every <laughs> tournament this season, so I'm sure we'll be seeing you again soon. Thank you very much, Chris. Dave, back to you. Leslie, thanks. Good to see Chris Barnes competing so well again this week. He currently leads the World Championship March point list, over 213,000 points. Walter Ray Williams Jr. stands to surpass him. So many points on the line for him. Norm Duke also has done well. How the top 10 fared? Tied for 49th this week for Chris. Walter Ray Williams Jr. still alive. Norm Duke's day ends with his loss in the first round of Walter Ray. And the others in the top 10. Still waiting to see Parker Bone, the third, on TV. Has not been here yet trying to win another championship. Big story today, though, Jason Williams trying to become the second straight amateur to win the Masters Championship. He's from near Seattle and can make some history today. He has to face the legend, Walter Ray Williams Jr., next. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the ABC Masters is brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. And by Bear Aspirin, take it for pain, take it for life. A year ago, Brett Wolf won his first career PBA title at the Masters in his first ever Masters appearance over Dennis Horan, 269-172. Another amateur, Jason Williams, is here to the final day as well. 
the lone amateur of our field, Jason Williams, came out of the loser's bracket by taking on and beating last week's winner up in Medford, Oregon, Brian Goble from Shawnee, Kansas. He would then take on the 1999 Masters champion, Brian Bogosian. He beat Bogosian handily by 52 pins in the three-game match play and moved on to today's TV show, trying to become the second straight Masters amateur champ. Well, there's another Williams a few more people are familiar with. Walter well, Ray's won 35 titles. Jason Williams has not won one before. How do you use that to your advantage today? <laughs> um, I really don't know. That's, uh, I just go out there, bowl the best I can. Um, you know, sometimes it intimidates players. Other times it just they, it motivates them to bowl very well. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully I can knock them down, though. Thanks, Walter Ray. No one's ever won it out of the three seed before, and I don't think anybody would be as surprised to see Walter Ray Williams Jr. be the first. Leslie, absolutely not with how consistent he's been. And in speaking with Jason Williams before the matches today, he said it was plain and simple, Randy. Everyone aims to be as consistent and as focused as Walter Ray Williams Jr. Now he's got a chance to bowl against him head-to-head -head with so much on the line. Yeah, and Jason being the, the uh, higher seed gets a choice of starting lane. He's starting the match, which means he's going to finish the match. He's also going to be finishing the match on the right lane. And in my opinion, that was the tricky lane for Walter Ray. See how it unfolds. How about the nerves for a young guy like this? 27 years old as an amateur. Head to head with Walter Ray Williams Jr. The bright lights TV. His first ball major. Crossing way over. And leaves a 10. And remember what we talked about at the opening with the lane conditions? how tough it was to play the middle part of the lane. And, and this is not where he has played all week. But you see what happens if you miss a little bit to the left. This ball almost misses the head pin running away Brooklyn. Ten Look pin out. for him. Good, we got That's it. That's the key, though. Got to get Brooklyn if you miss. And he starts Jason off coming out of the well-known and very successful Wichita State University program. And Gordon Vatican, the head coach there. Jason right. talked to us today, Randy, before the matches about how the coaches at Wichita State helped with his focus, and he'll be muttering to himself a lot about every pre-ball approach. Here's Walter Ray getting going. In the pocket. Come on. Yeah, also, right. along with Gordon Vatican, the Wichita State program, you gotta, you got to filter in Freddie Borden in Akron, one of the best coaches ever. But he's going to need all of that to go against this guy. Walter Ray out averaged Jason by almost 15 pins a game. Strike percentage a lot higher. Okay, Jason got him on a spare conversion, but you know, when you're striking like that and averaging like that, yeah, baby, yeah. And, and doing that, you're in for a long day. And watching Walter Ray warm up for this match, he struck every ball on the left lane. That's the lane he's going to finish on. Nine strikes for Walter A. Williams Jr. in that last match with Norm Duke, and a great finish for him. Now he starts off this match on fire as well. Back to Jason Williams, a two seed. It came in light. It's not comfortable, not comfortable yet. Yeah, and it really shows, you know, in, in talking with Jason Williams earlier, what a nice young man. I, I say young man, he looks like he's about 19. He's 27 years old. He's going to be doing something different with equipment, yeah. maybe changing his line. But you know, it's a tough spot to be in. He played the lanes a certain way all week long. He gets one left on the left lane. It goes Brooklyn. The adjustment off of that is to give it a little bit of room, and then he misses the head pin. Covers the one and two, and there are the matches. Just the one loss to Bogosian. Otherwise, after that, through the loser's bracket, including a win over Walter Ray Williams Jr. Matches up against him again. Here today, with much more at stake. Brian Smith awaits the winner in our stepladder format. Jason Williams and Brian have never won on the PBA Tour. Big moment for the young guy. Again crossing over. Coming in way high for a second time. Hey, and the reason why he's playing where he's playing is he didn't like his look from out. But you know what, if he was watching the first match, Norman, Walter Ray, although making great shots from out, shot some pretty big games. Time to make a move. 
He covers. Don't miss continuing coverage of the Australian Open right here on ESPN. The world's best tennis players continue down under. It continues at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 11 on the West Coast, only on ESPN. Later today, ESPN 2 as well. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Men's singles winners in the fourth round, including Agassi Ferrero and Wayne Ferreira. Come on, get up, get up. Seven pin up there. Well, he gets it into the oh, swish man. zone again and leaves the seven pin. But, you know, when Walter Ray's making shots like he's making, he creates area on the lane with his technique and his ball roll. And that's what he's doing from the outside yeah, part of the right. lane. Yeah, I think it was going to fall, but... Talking oh, with his wife, Paige, there on the reset. We'll see how he got here. The loss to Brian Smith and to Williams. Was able to get here after the roll off of the TV seating to the championship round. That's Esther Williams. A lot of family and friends, up to 20 members expected here today. Walter Ray from near Sacramento, California, originally. Now in Florida, picks up his spare. Walter Ray lived in Stockton, right down the road, Stockton, California, for years. So it's not surprising he has a pretty nice fan base here this week. The question is, are they holding up the masks? <laughs> <laughs> Walter Ray loves to pass out those masks before a TV show. In the pocket, flush yeah. again. Come on, well, come on. 136 career television appearances, all time number one in that category, continues to excel. He just is so good at doing the same thing every time. Great perspective from overhead, Jason Williams. Fine right now. Ball change and a line change. Whoa, that is way light, way off. That's the right idea, Jason. Just got to fine tune that somehow. Try to cover this one, two, six, ten. Two ways to do this. You could get the ball to the left of the head pin and drive the head pin into the six, ten. Or get the ball to the right side of the head pin and cover all four with the ball. And ends up just okay, chopping that pin. An open frame, and you can see the frustration starting to really flow with Jason Williams, who, by the way, has been on TV before. The 1998 NCAA Championships on ESPN2 when he bowled for Wichita State. We Shockers. He also has been at some amateur events and won big money, more than $100,000. Also televised, so he's been here under the bright lights before, but today, not the success he had hoped for. Well, that was a beautiful shot, and hopefully that'll get him loosened. Loosened up here a little bit, but this is the way he should be playing him. And all it takes for a player to see is one good shot like that, one good ball reaction. Confidence comes back. He's like, okay, here we go. Get up and carry. Come on. Talks yeah, to it. Yeah. And a late trip of the 10 pin. Come on. And we talk week in and week out about ringing tens and weak tens. Watch this. This is kind of in between the two. Six goes to the wall like it's going to lay there, and the head of the pin chops the 10 out. Sometimes when you're on that roll, every break goes your way, and you can see the confidence really hitting a peak now with Walter Ray. We've seen him enough on TV to know. Seven times he's been on this year, but looking just for a second title of the season. On fire, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Five strikes and six frames in this game. He has got a huge 50-pin lead over the amateur Jason Williams. He wants to take on Brian Smith in a rematch here at the Masters and win another major championship. He's on his way. In the 1980 ABC Masters, Neil Burton defeated his brother Nelson Bo Burton in the semifinals. He then meet Mark Roth in the championship match and would defeat him, becoming the first Masters champion in the new Step Ladder Finals format. Welcome back to the bowling, bowling stadium here in Reno, the ABC Masters. 
Well, you saw Neil Burton take out his brother and Mark Roth. Well, that was old school. We're going to show you some new school with Jason Williams. One of the unique things that he does that all your top players on the tour are doing, look at that step. Open. Go ahead and roll. Four step. Open. What does that do? Well, it creates the hit. It gets the hips to open up and creates that right to left hook. Now, this is the same old school, watch this, which I think is perfect, especially for a big guy. Look at the height of the backswing. Every player on our telecast today has very compact lower backswings, essential for making good shots on a tough lane pattern. This week's Dexter Approach and Jason Williams. The seven-year-old will be married July 27th. His fiance Colleen is here They're to be married. In Vancouver, Washington, honeymoon plans still up in the air a little bit. They've got some options. Well, it maybe I'll be predicated on how much money he makes. Yeah. <laughs> it could have something to do with it. Again, coming in high and leaving three. Colleen McMahon is Jason's fiance. Father Floyd here as well. There is Floyd, watching son Jason in action. This is. Excuse me, Dave. This is Jason's third Masters. He's also bowled in mm -hmm. three U.S. Opens. And he bowled the tournament in Tacoma two weeks ago. Didn't do as well there as he has here, certainly, in Tacoma. His goal to become PBA Player of the Year someday. Win a major. Well, he could win the major as an amateur. He also dedicated this tournament to his longtime friend, Herb Engel. Used to drill his equipment. Unfortunately, he passed away right before the Tacoma tournament. It's a little heavy heart, but a lot of incentive for him this week. Bottom of your screen, how some of the other PBA bowlers have fared, including Brian Gobler, who won last week in Medford with an eighth-place finish. Much different format, though, here at the ABC Masters. Jason plans on coming out on the PBA Tour in 2003 and 4, and that's when I plan on retiring. Because <laughs> this kid's going to be good. Don't fool yourself. Walter Ray looking for a four-bagger. A strike here. He's got a 60-pin lead. Dominance looking for the finals. Make it 60. Wow, big shocker. Walter just being Walter. Can strike out for 279. Nothing he does anymore, Dave Ryan, surprises me. But are you surprised, Randy, he's only won one championship this year? Yes. I'm not surprised that he's made seven telecasts this year. Done very well in arena earnings as well. Right up there with Bob Learn Jr., all-time best in that category. He leads just about every single category. Chasing the great Earl Anthony, though. The total of wins, he's six shy. He wanted that eight. And that's the only way you're going to stop Walter Ray right there, Dave. Seventh appearance on TV. How consistent has he been? Of course, in the Geico Classic, up in Tacoma, saw Norm Duke roll a 300 game in the semifinals. Norm eventually lost that one to Devaney. Well, he's had a 300 shot at him. The flash camera incident. <laughs> How could we forget <laughs> so, that in Albany? I mean... You know, a couple uh, couple things go his way. This guy could have easily won four times already. But he doesn't seem bothered by the fact it's only been one of them. When we've asked him all year long, he knows he's been consistent. The goal is to get himself in that top position. That came in high again, almost crossing over. Yeah, a three pin up there. Talking to himself about the lane. It, it looks two feet sooner. Yeah, it's great experience for Jason. He's worked really hard. He's bowled some, some big stuff. You know, he, he knows how to bowl, but experience of this kind is priceless. Going against a guy like Walter Ray, this venue. Today, 4 o'clock Eastern, Randy, 3 on the West Coast. Join ABC Sports for a one-of-a-kind figure skating event free from rules, regulations, and judges. The gold medalist, Sarah Hughes, America's best, taking to the ice in the Chevy Skating Spectacular. Today at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 3, though, on the West Coast. On ABC Sports. Get him some help. <laughs> with a 6 He's <laughs> doing all flex with the TV cameras. Well, 
It's a little too late for this kind of stuff, but nice when it happens anyway. Walter Ray Williams Jr. needs two pins. And he will bowl Brian Smith for $100,000 in the ABC Masters title. He never likes to get a split, even though he's clinched the match. That's what a perfectionist Walter Ray Williams Jr. is. He's advanced to take on Brian Smith and wrapped up at least $50,000 for second place, but you know he's gunning for the top prize. Right, you know, the interesting thing about what he just did there was Tim Chris, PBA champion, is out in the truck, works in the truck for us during our telecast. Told me, he said, Randy, the one thing you, gotta, you wanna watch for during the show is four nines. He said, players left more four, four nines this week than anything. Well, there's the first one. Back on target. The TV pair lanes 19 and 20 here at the stadium in Reno. A fantastic facility. We will fast track to the end. Jason Williams has been defeated. Walter Ray Williams Jr. with the family and friends watching in person will try to go for another major championship. He's got three already in his career, but never a Masters. Right, right now, Walter Ray trying to fine tune it. That match against Brian Smith, I think it's a fair bet that Brian is going to be playing very similar line to Walter Ray. Those are three majors he's won. Would love to add the Masters to that list. Since the best he's finished here has been ninth in the past. He's got second wrapped up today as he knocks off Jason Williams. And I think we're going to hear a lot more from Jason Williams after he becomes a regular member of the PBA Tour next year. He's planning on signing up full-time for the tour after he gets married in July. Next season, we'll see Jason Williams go for plenty more big championships, including the Masters next year. But right now, the moment belongs to Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Going for another major, he'll take on Brian Smith, the top seed, step ladder format today in Reno. And a major championship on the line. Big box tour points as well. Since 2000, the National Bowling Stadium, downtown Reno, Nevada, has hosted this Masters Championship, the second major of the PBA Tour season. Plenty of history has been made in ABC. So crucial in this event, a tournament founded in 51. and 80, we have the brand new format, the Step Ladder Final. Mike Galby, the only three-time winner, the subject of Miller High Life, get to know them this week. Mike Albee. I always told the uh, counselors in school I'd be an accountant just to kind of get them off my back. We've kind of made our basement into like a trophy room. I kind of got to build up a foundation on the house on the one side because I think the extra room we built on there is kind of starting to sink since I've got so much stuff in there. I'm a collector of sports memorabilia. I've got uh, the Pete Rose bats, Johnny Bench bats. Uh, I was a big Reds fan back in the 70s, big red machine. I've got an autographed Wayne Gretzky hockey stick, Islander autographed jerseys. Greatest moment on tour for me, the Triple Crown, the Grand Slam. You know, that was probably the moment that really made me just think, wow, finally I've done that. My wife I met because uh, her sister was married to Steve Cook, my doubles partner. We have two wonderful children, CJ is 12, Danielle will be five. My family's why I, I do as well as I do. My favorite foods, definitely pizza. That fleeting few seconds on TV when they hand you that check, or at the end of a tournament when you win, they hand you the trophy. I mean, that, that's me, that's what it's all about, the competition. This week's Miller High Life, get to know them. Brian Smith has never had the feeling, Mike Albee mentioned a moment ago, receiving a winner's check. Tries to make some history as the top seed today in Reno. Over the years, the Masters has been very good to amateur bowlers. Back in 1987, it was amateur Rick Steelsmith winning the event. Then in 1997, another amateur, Jason Queen, not only won, but thrilled the crowd by throwing a 300 game in the process. And just last year, amateur Brett Wolf became the sixth amateur to add his name to the list of Masters champions by beating Dennis Horan Jr. in the championship match. Well, I'm 
sure it feels like just yesterday for Brett Wolf being back here. He's joined the PBA Tour this season, and like many first-year players, you've had your struggles. Difference in a level of competition, and how would you classify it? Oh, it's unbelievable. You watch guys like Walter Ray, when they get a good break, they capitalize right on it. They throw the strike immediately after. When they get a bad break, it doesn't phase them. They step right up and throw another strike right at you. If you're not 100% on your game, they're going to roll right over you. And guys like Walter Ray, I mean, there is nobody better. He is just tremendous. He said I mean, watching Walter Ray against Jason Williams was like watching him against a high schooler. He has just been so dominant. What about your personal goals and what you'd like to accomplish the rest of the season? Well, I've had some trouble with my consistency, especially the first half of the year, but I think I'm starting to, to get in the flow of what it takes to be on tour. Uh, I'd really like to just continue cashing. I'm going to bowl at least four or five more stops this year, and I'd love to be able to cash in, in most, if not all of them. I'm not you know, expecting to come out and win. It'd be great if it happens, but certainly to know that I can play on a level with these guys week in and week out is really my goal. Well, he has this trophy that's sitting right here between us. He picked up the hardware last year. The PBA gave out their own hardware just this last week. They have named the Senior Player of the Year, the Senior Rookie of the Year, and the Regional Players of the Year. Among them, Steve Jarris, a regular on the PBA Tour. Congratulations to him as well. There have been no repeat winners in 14 tournaments this year. That is a PBA record. The previous record of 13, Walter Ray Williams can do it if he wins it today. The first Masters 1951 was contested in St. Paul, Minnesota. Lee Juglard won 620 bucks. A lot more on the line here for Rito. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, Leslie Goodell, our entire crew. Big bucks on the line as well. The Australian Open. Don't miss coverage here on ESPN. The world's best tennis players continue down under two o'clock Eastern Time, 11 here on the West Coast on ESPN. Later tonight on ESPN2, two-seat Andre Agassi for the men, the two-seat for the women, Venus Williams, each winning in the fourth round, trying to advance off to another grand slam. Here at some major we're talking about with the bowlers, Randy Peterson in Reno, Nevada. Are you a little bit surprised about how things have shaken out so far? Brian Smith uh, had a long time to wait. Walter A. Williams Jr. continues to be hot. I'm not surprised at all. The Beast is averaging 250. That would be Walter. <laughs> and uh, Brian Smith's been winning and, and taking it all in. But what Brian Smith needs to do to win his first title is he needs to suck it up. You can't be afraid and beat Walter Ray Williams Jr. you got to just take it to him. It's going to be a big challenge for him. Geico Direct Championship Recap. Randy? Well, my Geico Direct. In the first match, Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeating Norm Duke. Walter throwing seven in a row to beat Norm 264 to 234. Come on. Come on. And in match number two, Walter Ray Williams Jr. just wired in against Jason Williams, yeah, the amateur. Yeah. Taking care of him, 225 to 178, setting up the title match against Brian Smith. Leslie Goodell, Randy, very busy, joined now by the two finalists. Well, as we've mentioned, no three seed has ever won this tournament. Walter Ray Williams, have you feel very comfortable being the three seed, being able to come from that spot and win this tournament today? Well, it's better than the other positions I've been in this tournament before. Um, I'm not superstitious. I've been bowling well all week. I've uh, got a good reaction here. Um, Brian's got his hands full. Now, Brian, I talked to you a couple hours ago, an hour and a half to be exact. I said, how you feeling? You said, fine. You said, but we'll see in an hour and a half. After sitting and watching, how do you feel right now? I feel good. I mean, I have a good reaction. If I just go out and make 12 good shots, it's my tournament. Thanks a lot, Brian. And, oh, what, t talk real quick about how you got here. I mean, I, I played my A game all week. I mean, it's the first time I've been able to play hard and straight for a whole week. And, uh, you know, I got some breaks when I needed them and got through. Brian, thanks. Dave? He is ready. Brian Smith came out the bracket and would face off against Tim Mack. He would beat the amateur sensation by 15 pins and would move on to face Walter Ray Williams, Jr. You see, who would be the number one seed? It was a huge match with a lot of money on the line. Smith, with the victory, clinched at least second place. First seed in today's Masters Championship in Reno. Yes. $50,000 clinched by Brian Smith with that match. And we were talking to him earlier today. said, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I've never had that big a check guarantee before now. Possibility of 100000 But Walter Ray Williams Jr. stands in his way. The final starts with some help on the 10 pin for the legend. Wow. That was an interesting pin carry there. Wow. Alrighty then. <laughs> 5, 7, 10, then 7, 10, then 10, then nothing. Roseburg, Oregon, not far from Medford. Didn't fare well, though. 
Last week up at the Metro Open, good start for him. His wife Mariah, brother Brett, have driven down from Oregon to watch him bowl in person. By the numbers this week, several more games for Walter Ray Williams Jr., the average better for the 35-time finalists. Everything fairly even down the road. Well, Walter Ray out averaging by 16 pins a game. But, you know, Brian Smith did the little things he needed to do to win matches. Plain and simple, he never lost a match this week. Tournament leader right there. Brian, only five and a half hours by car from home in Roseburg, Oregon. Said he was very disappointed and missed the cut. An hour and a half from home last week in Medford. Only 12 players have won a major as their first ever title. Brian Smith's only won one match ever on, on TV. TV. That's right, and that was in Memphis. That was over Tommy Jones. Up to a nice start. Way back in October. Help again! Four pin this time. <laughs> this cut just Four never pin. goes away. Brian Smith steps up and throws two absolutely perfect shots. Walter Ray gets two shots that kind of look ugly. <laughs> Scores all even. My man. And the best thing for Brian Smith to do is not bit. even watch that. Play his game. You know, the nice part about Brian Smith, he acts really calm on camera. He's interviewed with Leslie. He seems really subdued and really calm. Trust me, he's a, everything, anything but that. Yeah. Come on. You can hear Walter Ray's reaction much better on the release. Mm. And a better ball reaction into the pocket. Long-term goals, Brian Smith to win a PBA title. He's never done that. When player of the year, Walter Ray's done that a bunch of times. Someday make the PBA Hall of Fame. Well, all those things have happened for Walter Ray already. Just getting going in his career in terms of success has been Smith. And he is flush in the pocket again. Shreds the rack. Well, just a great shot again. And, you know, that's the one thing that Brian Smith hasn't done enough of when he made TV, but watch this. We talked about it before with Jason Williams, that nice compact swing and a nice compact follow through equals great direction. Heading into this year, Randy, he was 0-5 in his career on TV. 1-6 before today on television. Polar opposite of Walter Ray Williams Jr. Yes. Again in the pocket. Yes. What a start for our two finalists today in Reno. Seven consecutive on, strikes. Stay focused. Smith trying for his first ever title. Williams Jr. trying for his first ever Masters Championship. It's an interesting matchup here. Smith is a top seed. Looks for the big bucks today. In 1991, Doug Kent made history by winning the ABC Masters in a two-frame roll-off. That's the only time it's happened in this event. His championship match against George Branham was tied at 236. By throwing four consecutive strikes in the two-frame roll-off, Doug Kent would etch his name in ABC Masters history. Doug Kent is the defending world championship titleist, and he is currently number 11 on the money leader list. Walter Ray Williams Jr. stands to earn at least 50,000 as the runner-up. The champion takes home a hundred grand today. It's a record purse, three hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. I just love some of that old footage. You know, Doug Kent doesn't have near as much hair now. Twelve years later, he's wearing glasses. Same for George. George doesn't have near as much hair. Oh, oh, Ray looks for the four bagger. No help there. Man, the four what are you doing out here? Boy, he didn't like that shot. It's not going where it belongs. Come on. This didn't look too bad. I think he just missed hit it at the bottom of the swing. He certainly, Randy, must have a sense. Brian Smith is on his game. Can't afford too many mistakes. Well, you, we talked about it on the on camera. You know, this, you got to get on this guy and apply the pressure and hope that he doesn't get a break or you, or you force him into a bad shot just by just getting on him. Best way to do that is exactly the way Brian Smith is doing it, striking every ball. So that fourth for Walter, the first non-strike frame Come on. Come on. of this final. And he's back on track. ABC President Jim Bevins, Jr.
He and his entire staff, an incredible job hosting the players and our ESPN crew this week in this immaculate facility. There's a little field of view from overhead, how big this place is. <laughs> it's cavernous. Looks for a five back. No Smith, a strike here. He's got a 21 pin lead. Can he keep it up? You bet. Keep up, man. Stay focused. One winner so far in the majors, Jason Couch, the lefty at the TOC, Uncasville, Connecticut. Today we determine the second, then just a couple weeks down the road. Not a lot of time between the Masters and the U.S. Open near L.A., all leading to the PBA World Championship. The march to the World Championship at the Taylor Sportsplex near Detroit, March 9th. All the events live on ESPN. To you with ESPN in sync. Looks for a six bagger to Smith. Get it tell. Yeah, Mariah likes that hit. There's a break she need, I guess. Break for Brian Smith. Walter Ray got oh, okay. one. Come on. This ball goes right through the schnoz. Six pin, last pin to fall. Terrific break. That could have been disastrous. He knows he knows he got one, got away with one there, but you know what? That's okay. He's entitled. Paul Kaler, my statistician, said that there was a few of those this week. Getting back to what you need to do to Walter Ray, let's see if that enters into his psyche, Dave Ryan. Down 21 with a strike here, Randy. Yeah! Come on! Well, I guess he just answered that question. Watch the intensity in these eyes. Remember, Walter Ray, the all-time TV appearance leader, has 117 victories on TV. Brian Smith has one. <laughs> one. Yeah, there, well, there's a pretty big difference there. But you know what? Brian Smith can erase all that today. Hi, there it is. Came in high and look out. Oh, big trouble. That's not what I wanted to see. She grabbed it. There's a difference between the shot that Brian Smith threw on that lane and the shot Walter Ray threw. This could have been Brian Smith real easy. Instead, it's Walter Ray. Not what he wanted to see. Four, seven, six, nine, and he's going to leave it open. What an opportunity now for Brian Smith for a first ever. PBA title and a major on the line. Incredible chance. And, and sometimes that's not a good thing. You know, Walter Ray strikes there. He keeps the pressure on Brian Smith. Brian Smith doesn't have a letdown. Well, right now, the door just swung wide open for him, working on six in a row. He throws two strikes here in the seventh and eighth. It could be game over. The only thing he'd be thinking about now is shooting 300. Seven bagger possible starts. Oh. No help on the six. Shit, there goes the perfect angle. game. Come on. Could have had a 39 pin lead with a strike there. With just a little angle, Brian. The same shot that Walter Ray got six on. Brian Smith gets nine. Did miss three single pin conversions. I don't want that to happen here. Okay, one good shot Easily right here. Six. Set it up. Come on, Bryce, set this one up. When the Brian shot. Smith stays clean the rest of the match, he's going to be in the high 240s. The best Walter Ray Williams Jr. can shoot if he strikes out, 241. All Brian Smith has to do is avoid disaster. The tournament's his. 81st in Medford last week. The best finish tied for third in Memphis, Tennessee. That was way back in October he made his other TV appearance of the season that's good yes loved it yes for good reason much better. And the pocket. Just stay focused next week the PBA tour rolls on to Las Vegas note the start time though everybody 4 30 Eastern time 1 30 here in the Pacific time zone the only event that will start at 4.30 Eastern, the rest of our tour season, all the way through, it'll be 12.30 Eastern starts. And Walter Ray Williams Jr. looking frustrated. 
All of a sudden, his ball reaction seemed to change right in the middle of the match. Walter doesn't go high because he makes bad shots. Ball's starting to hook early on him, and it's time to make a move. He still needs to strike out and set up the 10th frame by striking here in the ninth. He can still shoot 231. Brian Smith would still have to fill frames in the ninth and 10th. What I mean by that is he would have to mark. Things have gone very well, though. For Brian Smith, seven pin there for Walter A. Williams Jr. Brian was hoping he would get good ball reaction because he wasn't going to bowl on the fresh oil. But of course, you'd rather be in that enviable position of first place in the stepladder format. You've wrapped up at least second place, only one match as opposed to having to go through several players to get all the way to the championship. And right now, if Brian Smith marks in the ninth frame, he's going to win his first title against Walter Ray Williams Jr. and a major and $100,000. Wow. Randy, the best in his career prior was third place, a seed in the ladder format until now. Big four pin. Look it up. And his wife realizes how close her husband is to making some history. All the hard work. And he is a home builder in the offseason. That's what he has made the majority of his income from. Only $25,000 plus on tour this year until this point, until now. Big bucks on the way. Ten years, all the hard work. His father, Gordon, his mom, Charlotte, his wife, Mariah, his brother, Brett, all his friends. Even Rick Donnelly, the proprietor from last week, is here to root Brian on. Wow. Here it is, baby. Just an amazing feeling being in this spot. So family and friends are watching. Marks in the foundation, ninth frame. One pin. Save. Doesn't matter. Yes! He's done it! Yes! One time, baby. Yes! Ah, oh, it's awesome. Finally. For the years, first baby. time what in his want. career. God. Brian Smith is a PBA champion. His wife, Mariah, overcome by the emotion. It's at a major. Don't matter, baby. Thank you. Yes. Walter, great yeah, fun. Nice to Wow. Awesome, baby. Hi, honey. Mm. <laughs> How's that? And just a common little huh? hi, honey. How about that? Finally. Huh? Yes. Woo. That's Walter awesome. Ray Williams Jr. has got to finish out, but it's been clinched by Brian Smith. Love you. How awesome Family that, and huh? friends. That's, huh? his, that's his mom, Great. Sharla. Yeah. There's his dad, Gordo. Great. Sweet. His brother Brett sitting right behind wow. them. That's awesome. First one to be a major. <laughs> really happy for Brian Smith. He's worked really hard. You know, it's just a matter of time for him, Dave Ryan. All the players out here. We're lucky. Man. There's Paige, Walter's wife, even congratulating Brian. He just tells you a little wow. bit of, about him, the kind of class oh. act that he is. He knew it was just a matter of time before he yes. would get his first I win. win. Uh, what a one to win, baby. 36th time in Walter Ray Williams' incredible career. He'll finish as a runner-up. <laughs> Consolation. $50,000, not bad. The moment belongs to Oregon's own. Get the Sino, baby. Woo! Yeah. First one. Woo! Awesome. Brian Smith can finally call himself a yes. PBA champion. What a moment for one, him. baby. First one of many. First one of many. That's the first one, baby. Lots to come. Number one. Yes. Lots more. Woo! Love it. Oh, my gosh. And to do it against the best bowler that's ever lived. It means a lot. Wow. He could yes. not have said oh, it better. That's awesome. Brian Smith is a champion after all the hard work and dedication. His family overcome by the emotion of seeing history. His first ever title is a major. It comes to the Masters in Reno today.
ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the ABC Masters is brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. By Miller High Life to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. And by the American Bowling Congress, providing championship service since 1895. Make sure your league is ABC sanctioned. From Reno, Nevada, the ABC Masters Championship goes to Brian Smith. This event, starting back in 1951, the sport's premier match play event. And from Roseburg, Oregon, with so much emotion on the line and so much cash as well, is our winner, Brian Smith, joined by Leslie. This is a lesson in patience. His 10th year on the tour. What does it mean to finally win this title and for it to be a major? I can't even describe it. I mean, it's abs that's awesome. I mean, and to do it against the greatest bowler that's ever lived, I mean, that makes it that much, I mean, that makes it that much better. I How mean, you couldn't dream of anything better. How were you able to stay so focused having never been in this position before? Uh, just to just to try to stay relaxed and make good shots. I mean, don't don't bowl your opponent, bowl the pins. Try not to think about the money and the title. Just bowl 12 frames. Try to make 12 good shots. Is there a big advantage or was there a big advantage for you being the number one seed and having beaten Walter Ray last night? No, I don't think so. I mean, Walter's been here on TV so many times that there's no advantage when you bowl him or any of the guys out on tour. There, Everybody's just that good. It's been a long road for you. Ten years. I'm sure you've evaluated what you wanted to do in your future. Does this change your outlook for the future and how long you want to stay with this? Uh, probably so. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't, uh, I was kind of getting disappointed with my career. Um, I didn't feel like I was getting out, you know, getting, getting where I wanted to be. If I can't be a top player, I didn't want to do it anymore. And this just proved to myself that I do belong here and there's going to be many more to come. $100,000. Any plans for the money? We're going to, uh, not right now. We'll probably, uh, we just finished our uh, house, and we'll probably start a new house here within the next year or two and uh, use it for that. I saw Mariah writing checks right after everything was done. So. <laughs> uh, she can get her new furniture, that's it. <laughs> Congratulations, Brian. Dave Ryan. Wow, what a moment for Brian and Mariah. And uh, that new house just got finished a couple of months ago, so now a new one, I guess, is going to be in the works for the Smiths up in Oregon. But even watching the interview with Leslie and Mariah a moment ago with Brian Smith, he's still relaxed. He doesn't appear like the emotion ever really overflowed with him. We spoke with him, Randy, before the match today, and he never seemed to be over-emotional, seemed focused, and he came through with flying colors. Well, Brian's a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of an enigma. You never really know quite what's going on. The one thing I know is that inside, he's got as much fire as anybody. And right now, Dave, I got to get down to Brian because next week is Vegas. I got to hit him up for a while. <laughs> see, I'm just <laughs> Overall, the event here, as we see Walter Ray Williams getting ready to talk with Leslie down there. I, are you surprised with how things shook out and Walter Ray had a couple of uh, some problems in the championship match in the open frame? The only thing I'm really surprised at is it looked like Walter Ray's reaction started to change midway through the match, and that was the turning point. Mm. Brian Smith threw great quality shots when he needed to, stayed out of trouble. Walter Ray, the big split, that was the turning point in the match. All right, let's take a look now at the updated world points list as they lead to the world championship in March at Taylor Sportsplex just outside Detroit, Michigan. Walter Ray Williams Jr. back over Chris Barnes. We heard from Chris with Leslie earlier in the day today Here from Reno. 249,000 plus points. Norm Duke with an excellent week as well, up to third place. The top eight make that round of 16 automatically go right by match play and get themselves in great position for the world championship near Detroit. Let's go back down to Leslie now with Walter Ray Williams Jr. Thanks, Dave. Walter Ray, Randy was just saying it looked like your reaction changed a little bit during that match. Would you say that's what happened? Well, I'm not really sure. I had a pretty good line, obviously. The other two games were pretty good. Uh, and that wasn't too bad of a game, but uh, that shot in the seventh frame really got me. Um, I really didn't expect that. Uh, I guess I must have actually grabbed it and got some revs on it, which is unusual for me. Talk about Brian Smith and what he did here today and just the opportunity for somebody who's been around as long as he has to get that first win. Oh, he, he definitely deserves a win. Uh, I just wish it wasn't against me. Uh, he's been bowling great all these years, and it's nice to see him win. I'm just kind of disappointed I wasn't able to take advantage of uh, what I had today. I, I, I think I let it go. I, I really had the tournament in, in hand and just let him have it. 
Well, I'm sure we've seen you win 35 of these. I'm sure there's another one in your future. Walter Ray, thank you very much. You, Dave, back to you. Leslie Walter, thanks so much. So, Randy Peterson for you. 1987 in Toledo World Championship was your first major. So you know exactly what Brian Smith is feeling like. But not only is today's first major championship, his first ever PBA title, and just his second ever TV win. Well, it, it, again, it doesn't surprise me. You know, when I, when I won the national championship, I had to beat Amleto Monticelli, mm. Hall of Famer. Uh, so it's, it's only fitting. A guy like Brian, who was destined to win out here, he certainly had all the tools and the talent, put it all together one week for a major for 100000 against, in his own words, the greatest bowler that's ever lived. Now looking down the road, we've got Vegas, we've got the U.S. Open just in a couple weeks in L.A. How difficult is it for a young bowler like that to win his first ever championship, it's a major, to keep focused and keep bowling well? It's really hard the next week to regroup, you know, you, especially after you just pocketed 100,000. <laughs> um, you know what? It's going to take him a game or two, and then all of a sudden his mind's going to go back to autopilot right in the middle of the tournament. He's going to say, okay, it's, it's go time. We've got to get back after it. He was incredibly focused throughout this entire week. And how about a big advantage of facing Walter Williams Jr. last night? Leslie asked him, he said that doesn't make a big difference, but it had to help a little bit mentally knowing you can beat the great champion. Absolutely. Not only that, by being the, the top seed, you're guaranteed $50,000. You know, why do you think Walter was smiling when mm -hmm. Leslie did the interview? <laughs> Obviously, Walter, Walter wanted to win the tournament, yeah. but you know, the consolation prize, fifty grand. Yeah, not, not so bad. bad. Not bad. So two majors so far are complete. Jason Couch, the left-hander, won at the TOC, and now Brian Smith. U.S. Open, Fountain Valley, California, near L.A., coming a uh, couple couple of weeks down the road. It's all the march to the PBA World Championship. So now we've got two of the four done. Are you surprised with how the year has developed? Not really. You know, I think the only thing that I'm a little bit surprised at is the fact that I won. <laughs> but I think we've had some great storylines and some great champions. 300 great matches all year long. And 15 new winners on tour, different winners on tour every week. So far, still no repeat winner on the PBA Tour this season. So congratulations to Brian Smith, a champion today. Join us next week on ESPN for the PBA Storm Las Vegas Classic from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now stay tuned for Australian Open tennis action. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For the entire PBA crew here on ESPN, my partner Randy Peterson and Leslie Goodell doing a great job with the interviews today. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Reno, Nevada. What an event for Brian Smith from Roseburg, Oregon. He wins his first ever PBA title over the legend Walter A. Williams Jr. And it's a major championship. He and his family won hundreds.